Oh boy, we about to get juicy. We're gonna insert it, we're gonna send it, we're gonna EQ it, we're gonna pan it, and then we're gonna crank it up. Pan, pan, pan. You know what, I like that idea. Yeah. You know, I've never realized before that you were so versatile. Well, hey podcast people, welcome to the Pod Sound School. I'm Studio Steve, and if it's your first time here, you should know that we are a channel packed full of resources for podcasters, for those looking to start a podcast, and for entrepreneurs who are wanting to leverage the power of podcasting to grow their business or their brand. You name it, if it's about podcasting, we've got you covered. So if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date on the free resources that we post every week. On today's episode, we're gonna discuss the channel strip. The channel strip is probably the most used tool by audio people to manipulate, mix, and route their audio signal. So at the end of this episode, you will know how a channel strip works, what it does, and your mixing is going to improve, and your recordings are gonna run smoother and hopefully sound better. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so first let's take a look at this PreSonus 16 channel mixer and check out a channel strip. Let's focus in on track three. Starting at the top of the track, you'll notice we have two input options. The first is an XLR jack with three little holes. This is our mic input for a microphone. The next is a quarter inch jack. This is our line input. This is for devices that are already at line level, like keyboards or the output of an external preamp. For a digital channel strip that we'll look at in a moment, you won't see this option because this is something you'll see set up on your audio interface that has an AD converter to go into your computer. So the next stop, also something that is generally controlled from our audio interface and not our digital channel strip, is our gain knob. This is where we will adjust the gain of our microphone, our instrument, or our line input. This mixer automatically adjusts the volume of the mic or the line, depending on which is plugged into the channel. Some mixers or interfaces will have a mic line switch that you will toggle between. And moving on, we get to our EQ section. This is technically an inserted section, and you won't see the section on all mixers. It is very common because it is something that audio people are constantly using. Here you'll notice the frequencies printed 125 kilohertz, 140 hertz, and 80 hertz. This is where you set the frequency that you'd like to cut or boost. And now we move to the aux section, or the send section. Aux, or AUX, stands for auxiliary, which means copy. So here on the channel strip, we can copy our signal and send it somewhere else without affecting the original signal that is going down the channel strip. This is most often used for setting up headphone mixes, sub mixes, and especially effect sends. You'll see here we have three sends listed Mon 1, Mon 2, and Effects. If we zoom back out and take a look over at our master section, we'll see the corresponding outputs for these sends. We can take the copied signal from these outputs and send them into a headphone amp, uh, an effects unit, or anything we can imagine. Okay, now back to our track. After the aux or the send section, we reach a pan knob. You'll notice on one side a printed L and on the other side an R for left and right. We can adjust this knob here to determine what percentage of our signal will be sent to the left side or to the right side. For podcast voices, we almost always leave this in the center. And the last bit we'll cover for this channel strip is the large fader. This is the nifty and famous slider of our mixer. You'll also see this referred to as the LF. Here we determine the final output volume of this track by sliding it up or down. The output path of the signal at this point is most commonly sent to the master section which is where our studio monitors or speakers are plugged into. And there's a quick overview of a basic mixer. Now let's jump over to a digital mixer inside of a DAW or a digital audio workstation. Today we'll take a look inside Pro Tools first. Already you can see the similarities. We have audio tracks, a couple of aux tracks, and a master track. 
Let's look at track three here too. The first place this track comes in contact with our signal coming from the digital cable that's coming from our interface is the input. This is the section labeled I-O, or input output. The top box here is the input. Here you can select what input you'd like this track to be. Now something we see here that we didn't see over on the basic PreSonus is this insert section. Many analog mixers don't have this section. The other thing you'll notice missing on these tracks is the EQ section. Remember I said that most digital mixers don't default with those? Well this is where we can insert plugins or the virtual versions of audio equipment onto our channel strip. By selecting an empty box here, we open our DAW's plugin options. I'll select an EQ, and now we have a beautiful EQ unit ready to use on this track. You can see the range of frequencies and different bands here that have very similar controls to the mixer we already looked at. Okay, so now we move on to the sends section. Here we are allowed to customize our own sends. By clicking on an empty box, I can see my output options. I'm going to select bus one. When I make this selection, a small fader pops up. This fader has the same function of the aux knob we saw on the last mixer. This is the send, so this is how loud I want the copied signal to travel to my submix or effects bus. Now we simply move over to an open aux track and I give it the corresponding input for the send we just set up. I'll do that here on aux1. You'll see now aux1 has an input of bus1 and track 3 is being sent to bus1. Now I can send any of my tracks over to aux1 using bus1. And if I want this aux to be a reverb or echo, for example, I would simply insert an effect onto the aux1 track. You'll notice I can set up multiple aux sends by repeating the process with bus 3-4. Okay, there's our inserts and send options. Now let's move down to the panning section. Just like our mixer, we can pan left to right here. And after our panning knob, we move to our large fader, or LF. Here we adjust the final output of our channel, and ba-boom, ba-bang. Well, there you have it, Poppreneurs. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Or better yet, hit us up on social media. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date on all of the free podcasting resources that we post here once a week. And come say hi to us on social media. We just started an awesome Facebook group called Podcasting for Bosses. A lot of good resources for you over there. And of course, you can find us at podsoundschool.com. Happy casting.